plane crashes, car accidents, assassinations. The Kennedy family has been beset by tragedy for decades. Were these events the result of a domineering and crooked father, or was something more sinister to blame? This week's episode is The Kennedy Family Curse. Up bump in the night, your heart fills with dread. Probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister who? Have you ever felt like you were cursed? Yeah, I feel like I'm cursed with this sinus infection. <laughs> hey, everybody. Right this is a real trooper. <laughs> she showed up even though she is clogged up in her well, face. Well, I'm fine. I just want everyone to, if if you're, you know how sometimes you're like, ugh, I don't want to listen to somebody that sounds like they've got snot in their face. <laughs> <laughs> That seems very mean and judgmental. Uh, although I did turn a podcast off uh, a couple of weeks ago because halfway through it, the lady goes, oh, yeah, thank you so much. And something like got put down. And then she started eating like what sounded like a sandwich. Uh-uh. And so she'd be like talking about uh, she was a reporter for The New York Times. And she said, you know, sometimes a lot, a lot of issues will come up. And, uh, oh, uh, hell no. And I, was like, I, can't listen. I cannot stand. Tommy can tell you it has gotten us into some real tiffs are you like an anti-cruncher yeah i'm an anti what is that called when like you can't stand the any sound that a person makes with their mouth matt well that is it starts with an m there's a name for it masticating is when you're chewing yeah 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 but like there is an actual like mental yes thing. That i have that i worked with a person who had that and insisted that me and the him and our one other co-worker work within about a four foot radius so if i was hungry he'd be like you 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 have to stop crunching and i was like he would I, tell you i have to eat Yes. Oh man! So there, I was like, okay, I'm going to be outside eating some Doritos. I'm I'm not aggressive enough to tell people to their face, but at the job where Tommy still works, I did email HR once because <laughs> the guy in the cubicle next to me would not stop drumming his fingers oh. on his desk and popping his gum. Oof, and there's... I had had it. And I emailed them. She sent them a company-wide email, like reminding people to be respectful, respectful of each other's spaces because everybody was in like such tight quarters. He continued to do it. And oh, I emailed her again. And I was like, I don't think he gets it. And so she <laughs> messaged him like directly and was like, Hey, and so, this was about you. And he stopped and he was the nicest guy. And she would be like, why don't you just lean over and tell him? I'm like, because I have to see him every day. And there's like five other people in here. I'm not going to have that That's conversation. True. And I guess if there was enough people around him, he wouldn't know it was you. Yeah. But also it clearly didn't. Well, it may have bothered other people, but they didn't say anything. They were a bunch of wimps. I just have a very, very low tolerance for stuff like that. Oh, I really? Can't see it. <laughs> I can't stand people chewing. So Tommy will be like eating and he'll try and eat so quietly and I'll just like cut my saint. eyes at him and he'll just be like, I'm going to go in the other room. <laughs> Tommy Brown is a saint. I just want to put it out there. He oh, is. man. You can't, my sister, uh, when we worked together at a mortgage place and the guy behind her was like the most quiet, mild mannered guy and his wife was a hardcore bitch. <laughs> or is this a comparison of Tommy and I? No. <laughs> Because you just very naturally segued from Tommy and I into this topic. Well, she shared a cubicle wall with him, and he would be like, hello, to answer the phone. And then through it wasn't on speakerphone. Through the receiver, would be like, can you believe that? And she would be screaming at him. And he'd be like, okay, uh-huh, okay. Sounds oh, good. that poor man. I always wonder if he hung up and was like, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, he can't say it. He probably was just like so quiet at work because it, he, that was the only time he had any peace in his life the only the loudest thing besides his wife yelling was one time he farted at his desk <laughs> <laughs> and it was just the three of you no this was when shannon shannon was like in a back cubicle area with him and he farted and then it was just like sorry <laughs> 
Stan. Shout out to Stan the man. I appreciate that he owned it, though, instead of trying to be like, oh, uh, that wasn't me. Or just, like, not say anything. Pardon me. Yeah, you got to say something. You have to own up to your farts. That's really funny. Oh, oh man. man. Huh. <laughs> uh, what a, very briefly, are we going to do a mini-sode about our psychic fair? Yeah, I think All right, we should. Catch a, catch a mini-sode this week we're going to do on yeah, the psychic fair. We went scene. to the Dallas Psychic Fair again yesterday yes and super fun new readings to talk about oh my god different you guys... heather did one with runes i had sylvia again so <sighs> i couldn't get into her because she's obviously popular because when i got there at 1 30 they were like her next one is at 3 45 <laughs> she is phenomenal and then i had a new person who did runes so i we'll did talk about it. i used a new one and she was great too yes we have so we have a lot of good experiences yeah. and i got picked again in the group reading oh to have yes. a message and i bought some crystals we'll talk about oh you all did that. yeah i didn't know you bought I crystals nice. uh so the thing about a psychic is they can tell you if you're cursed oh hopefully if you go and you pick the or they out. curse you <laughs> Maybe. The, one of the psychics was like, I'm a legitimate witch. And I was like, oh, cool, man. Thanks. Which one was she? Delphine. Oh. And she was like, I can come and do clearings of houses and things. And I was like, Oh, she's hex. the one that said she'd be on the mm-hmm. podcast. Yeah. yeah I, like, I want to meet hex her. people. I'm just kidding. I didn't ask that. <laughs> uh, but yeah. She probably so, can, though. I mean, you know what? She was powerful. She gave me quite a reading. So we're talking today about the Kennedy curse. So all this month, we will be each week doing a different kennedy topic correct because it's the 55th anniversary of jfk being assassinated in dallas in our great city of dallas you know what every city has to be famous for something Mm -hmm. you know we the big apple city that never sleeps the city that a president can rarely come to the windy city of chicago or the city that will always be known as where the president was assassinated to be fair the Illuminati did it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I will There's going to be a lot of Illuminati talk in this episode. But the, I will try. We're, we're going to try to keep it organized. So this one's going to be about the family curse. Yes. And then when we talk about the assassination, kind of keep it, uh, you know, siloed off. Yes. So. Yes. As same with Chappaquiddick. Correct. Chappaquiddick. 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 <laughs> Which I, when I re- remember learning about that for the first time, I was like, what? And yeah. then I started researching the Kennedy family curse and I was like, what? Yeah. So this week will be the Kennedy family curse. Next week is Chappaquiddick. And then we're thinking JFK will probably be a two-parter. So well, that'll finish out the Definitely the one part on the actual assassination. And I need a whole episode because of the I'm alien just, theory I'm I just, have. And the shrimp poison dart that did. <laughs> she you know what there's a lot of benefits to be my friend and one of them is <laughs> i especially if you're christy i text the most bizarre things and i was like fyi uh jfk was killed because he was aware of alien technology and he wanted to stop investment in alien technology and he was killed by a shrimp poison dart and she was just like dot 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 <laughs> usually i just reply with a gif that's like uh, uh, head exploding or something. Cool. What was that? <laughs> tinfoil hat. So yeah. this whole month will be a lot of history and tinfoil hats. Yes, yes, yes. Well, the Kennedy curse, man, this family, I'll tell you what, they are something else. Mm-hmm. The name, the Kennedy curse, refers to the untimely and unusual deaths and grave injuries associated with the famous Kennedy family. So we're also going to really try and keep uh, track for you guys of who is married to who and who, how people are related. So it's a whole family tree because there is my God, this is like a family forest. I they found have so many freaking people in this family. I didn't use source it a lot because it was on the CIA.gov website, which by the way is a treasure trove. <laughs> Go to that. I spent <laughs> okay. a lot of time reading that. It's a great way to fall asleep and have nightmares. Oh, uh, but I did find a, I won't say a completely unhinged person, but on the edge. <laughs> Half, uh, halfway unhinged. Yeah. Who was like very like, serious about the Illuminati families. And they talk about the past Kennedys were in Ireland. And then they, um, there were three strands of Kennedys oh, and like three like main, bacteria. Yes. Like three main. Um, and they decided that they were, they like all inbred with each other oh. and like intermarry. You know what? That wouldn't surprise me. That's I mean, how... most powerful families inbred back in the day. Gross. Well, here's how. It got started for the most part. Joseph and Mary Kennedy had nine children. Here are their names. Also, they all had nicknames. What the hell? And afterwards, I'll have a real hot take about some of these nicknames. Did you have a nickname in your family? No. Well, I mean, Christy is 
and a shortened version of my real name, which, which is, is Christine, which is, which is, your name is Chris Christopherson which is Wallace. Voldemort. <laughs> it's Chris Christopherson Wallace, yeah. but I go by Christine. But no, not really. My mom, when she would get mad at me, would call me Ladybug, which should be a term of a like, dear get over here, Ladybug. She'd be like, all right, Ladybug. Like I was being a smart Oh, that's kind of like saying like, listen here, my mom would say yeah, Missy yeah. Prissy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or now my mom would go, all right, bitch. <laughs> What age did you go from Missy Prissy to bitch? Like 13. Yeah, yeah. You Once you hit the teens, yeah. no, I'm not sure. That's why I was like, yeah. Uh, so here are Joseph and Mary Kennedy's nine children. And this is also in order of uh, how they were born. So the oldest, Joseph Patrick, or Joe, John Fitzgerald, or Jack, Rose Marie, they called her Rosemary, Kathleen Agnes, or Kick. A fun fact, there was a lot of Kathleen's in the family, and a great-great aunt was named Kathleen uh, Fitzgerald, and she was so fun and wild that her dad called her Kick. So oh. then anyone in the family that was named Kathleen, they, they got called Kick. Interesting. Because I was like, why? Uh, Ella's middle name is Kathleen. Oh, look, you so call her maybe Kick. we'll call her Kick yeah, from now on. I was like, why on. is everyone called Kick? But that's why. Also, back then, like, Nate... Okay, well, here's my hot take. I don't understand why Jack... Is a nickname for John. You sound like me when I was about eight years old and I learned, and they're like, Jack Kennedy, this, Jack and Jackie Kennedy. And then they said John F. Kennedy. And I was like, did she have two husbands? Which one got shot? And mom's like, no, no, no. It's one person. A nickname should be shorter than your name. Well, what about Dick and Richard? That one, it makes a little more sense. Still confusing. But I I guess John and Jack are the same amount of letters. Also, William and Ted. That doesn't. What the fuck? Ted is for Theodore. Yeah, I mean, but, but I'm saying in real life, but in the Kennedy family, you just say whatever you want. Or Edward. I guess Edward, Edward okay. Edward and, but Jack and John, I don't get that one because it's the same amount of letters, it takes the same amount of time to say. It's an, I and think they it's both an, sound like nicknames. Let me just say, it's an, I think it's an Irish Catholic thing. Oh, maybe that's on, true. Let me tell you my research source. Okay. On 30 Rock. <laughs> okay, well, I buy it. Jack Donaghy. No, his name's Jack, though. Never mind. I was like, his mom calls him Jackie Boy, but I think his name's actually, no, because his name's John Francis Donaghy. There you go. And he goes by Jack. Well, John Fitzgerald, or as probably the most famous of the Kennedys, JFK, Rosemarie or Rosemary, Kathleen Agnes's kick, Eunice Mary. She, she didn't, didn't. She didn't have one. They her were name's like Eunice. They're like, we're gonna just let you have Eunice. Hey, Eunice. <laughs> Patricia Helen or Pat. Mm-hmm. Robert Francis. That was Bobby, also known as RFK. Yes. Jean Ann. And Edward Moore, or Ted Kennedy, maybe the slimiest of the Kennedys. So he's the first one who ever said Kennedy family curse. And mm-hmm. it was as he tearfully asked for forgiveness after kind of technically killing a lady. Yeah. We'll get to that yeah. in a little bit. Yeah. We'll dabble in it here, and then we'll do the whole Chappaquiddick episode. If you're, but he's weeping into the camera. Yeah. He's like, well, our family must be cursed. If that's why. Yeah, that's, a, that's a solid argument. If you're on <laughs> trial for a murder, just say that you've been cursed. <laughs> it wasn't us. So of these nine children, one was forced to have a lobotomy, four died violent deaths, and several of them had children of their own that suffered great tragedy. Whew. Now we're going to get into kind of a one timeline of this, the just shit show that is the Kennedy family. <laughs> so 1941, Rosemary Kennedy. In 1941, Joseph and Rose Kennedy had their first daughter, Rosemary. Rose went into labor very quickly, which caused Rosemary to enter the birth canal before the doctor arrived. To try and prevent the baby from delivering too soon, a nurse instructed Rose to cross her legs. This caused the oxygen supply to be cut off to the baby, which ultimately led to her suffering from intellectual disabilities. That is, that's tough because the nurse is telling you to do something. Yeah. I mean. It's yeah. also the 40s and they did not know. He also probably came in smoking a cigarette well, to deliver I'm, that baby. Frankly, I'm surprised she was awake because my grandmother had, Uncle Jerry was born in like 1942. Then Darlene was born in four, uh, 46 and my mom was born in 52. Sorry, mom. I just run it out. Hold you are. But like <laughs> my, my grandma's like, oh yeah. Like I would go to the hospital and be like, I'm in labor. And they're like, okay, breathe breathe this in yeah. and they had twilight birth yes. and they knocked you out. Yes. And my, my grandma's like, me and I was like, yeah, you woke up and they just handed you a baby. It yeah. was great. Yeah. Or even back before then, 
or maybe even at the same time, they would, uh, they considered you hysterical and like you were like drugged. Yes. And they would blindfold you God. and like put you in a straitjacket. I mean, the history of labor is a very disgusting, crazy thing to look and into. It's, it's like torturous. Well, so Rosemary Kennedy's born. She had about a 60 to 70 IQ, mm-hmm. which gives her the intellectual capabilities once she's grown up of about an eight to a 12 year old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, as she got older, she developed violent mood swings. She also developed a gait, which led to an infamous stumble in front of the King of England. Because Joseph Kennedy was the ambassador to the UK around this time. Uh And they said that at the time he would go around with all of his kids. And it was kind of like, I mean, it'd be parading your family around the Kardashians or the Duggars or something, you know, like a cute family. And they're like, oh, it's the and he was kind of he was like a a liquor distributor in the U S so it's not, this was his first time, like his foray into high society and his one daughter trips and falls in front of the king. Very embarrassing to the family thinking he could fix Rosemary. Come on. Joseph unbeknownst to his wife, Rose allowed doctors to perform a prefrontal lobotomy on Rosemary. That's horrifying. So, so gross. This was a very new procedure at the time, with only 80 having been performed in the U.S., and of those, 80% of them were on women. Well, that seems Are not we surprising. Are no, we we're not. Also, Joe Kennedy did not tell his wife that he was having this done. Yeah. He took her to the do- took Rose uh, Mary to the doctor. They put her on a mild tranquilizer, but she was awake, yeah. and they stick a, a thing up your nose hole, and they basically Dig out your scrape brain. out the front part of your yeah. brain. Well, the procedure did not go well, and in fact, it made her condition much worse. Many believe too much of her brain was removed because the doctors didn't know what they were doing. They were just feeling around. Afterwards, she was unable to walk, talk, or even urinate. Yeah, they said she was 23 when it happened and that she was diminished to the mental uh, capacity of a two- to three-year-old oh child. My God, that's so sad. Mm-hmm. In hopes of avoiding further shame... Her parents institutionalized her where she lived until her death in 2005. The Kennedy family essentially erased Rosemary from their public profile, and no one even knew of this lobotomy until 1961. I mean, think they about They just the kept things. it under wraps. They said the nanny, um, who also Joe was having an affair with. I mean, are we surprised? No. I'm sure he had an affair with many people. The nanny said that after she was sent to the institution, her name was not allowed to be spoken in that house. Like, no wow. one no one mentioned her. It was like she never existed. And how sad for her. I mean, I'm sure they didn't go visit her. Well, and, 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 and she didn't die that long ago. No, she lived until 2005. Yes. That's insane. Well, my thing is, is she was diminished to the mental capacity of a two or three year old. They can recognize their family. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, not like she, it's not like she was like a vegetable. They also have emotions. And, yes. I mean, it's just so heartbreaking. It's super sad. That like he, from the beginning, thought that she was less than because she was born with a like, mental deficiency. Well, and it's, he's a man that's all about appearances. Yeah. And I think it was because he came from kind of seedy money that like his dad owned a saloon and made his money on alcohol. Yeah. And Joe Kennedy thought the whole Irish, drunk Irish stereotype was embarrassing. And so he never drank. And so he wanted to. He just this, made his money off of those that did. Yes. And he wanted to have this perfect, picture perfect family and be fancy. Yeah. And be a high society ambassador. And by God, if. <laughs> If you're going to trip and stumble in front of the King of England, you're getting sent to an you get institution your scooped out. with your brain half gone. God. Well, moving on to August 12th, 1944, Joe Kennedy Jr., which was JFK's older brother. Mm-hmm. Here's where we start getting into the plane crashes in the Kennedy curse. He Correct. was the first one that was killed in a plane crash after volunteering to pilot a secret World War II bombing mission in Nazi-occupied France. Okay, so this is a really sad story. So Joe Kennedy Jr. is the old one, older, oldest brother. He was the first born. He was the golden child. He was supposed to be the key to the family legacy, hey, Joe, right? Joe, the dad wanted him to be president. Correct. So Joe Kennedy Sr. is ambassador to the UK in World War II, and he's in London, and the whole thing was all these politicians stayed in London in solidarity with the British people, that if there's bombings in London... You know what? If they get one of you, they get us all. Joe Kennedy Sr. went to the English countryside Uh, and was basically 
considered a baby, like a big wuss. Like a British politician was quoted as saying, "Like I thought sunflowers were yellow, and then I met Joe Kennedy." Oh, so he had this reputation. That's a sick burn, dude. He had this, re- and you, can you imagine it? Like drinking tea. Oh, I thought sunflowers <laughs> were yellow, and then I saw Joe Kennedy. And everybody's <laughs> like, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, qu- killer burn, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like kind of shamed now, and his and Joe Kennedy Jr. was one of the first kids to say the kennedy clan and he's like we're the we're all for one one for all except for mm-hmm. her sister yeah and well you know we <laughs> except need to, for the one we don't talk about and he's like we need to look so badass or whatever and so he joined the military jfk despite his frail body yes. also joined the military so this is the ironic part so joe is like jacked handsome guy gets in the military he's doing great he's a pilot jfk has to literally they have to hire a trainer to get him strong enough to qualify to get into the military and they put him on these pt boats which are like surface boats that shoot torpedoes and they would get these rich kids to get on the surf the torpedo boats because they were sailboats basically and rich kids had like the kennedys had a yacht and like sure. they knew how to They'd sail all been to regattas yes and so jfk is on this boat and somehow people say that it was due to negligence or they were hung over or asleep it gets broadsided by a Japanese boat and it breaks P- PT-109 in half and the seven crewmen and JFK swim to this island. So this is the story that jo- Joe Kennedy Sr. portrays of his son because basically his son just fucked up and he basically is stuck on an island with all these people. And oh, it's like Survivor. It's like Survivor. And JFK this is the story, was the strongest of everyone, oh. which I find hard to believe. And swimming out, he would swim out, take off all of his clothes, swim out into the ocean every day with this coconut that's like, please help us, and would try to find boats. And a then, coconut? I guess he carved a, a, the thing in the coconut. And he swims out there, and so finally... I'm going to see that. Well, uh, finally a boat comes, and I guess he throws the coconut at him, I don't know. They get <laughs> saved, and he comes back home, and Joe Kennedy had then started investing in movies and stuff, and starts like wa- wanting JFK to run for office office and running these commercials and they're like jfk is a hero he swam uh, out in the middle of the ocean to save all of his brethren on the boat meanwhile joe kennedy jr is like a legitimate like he's gotten these he was like taking on as much as he could because he he had no uh business experience and he wanted to run for office so he's like well i have to be a war hero so he would take on all these like extra challenges so that he would be able to be like a brigade general well JFK basically didn't like fucked up. He failed upward, which isn't that every rich white man. Yes. He failed upward. And so he's like this now coming back. And they said they would throw these like parties and stuff for JFK where they're like, our son is a war hero. And that Joe Jr. would be like, yeah, great. And would go upstairs and be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then he and so then, freaking so, died well, so flying he, a bombing mission. Here's my question Did he die accidentally oh. or. He you think he kamikaze he, this? Well, they said he was due to be uh, let out. Like they said, okay, you're ready. You're discharged honorably. You did your duty. You're, 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 the gig is up. And he's like, no, 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 I want to stay. And England's like, well, we're not really doing anything except for we're testing these remote controlled airplanes, but they are very dangerous. He's like, put me in one. He and probably would, was trying to prove to his dad that that's he was exactly a what badass. they said. And the night before, and they're like, oh, wow, Joe Jr. is going to do this really cool experimental flight. And the night before, the engineer's like, yeah, we're probably going to have to cancel the flight because we think some things are going to go wrong. And then Joe Jr. was like, fuck it, let's go. And oh, it's like, did he man. do that because he wanted to prove something? Yes. Or was he like, I will never be as good as Jackie. I'm going to kill myself. Like Jack Kennedy. I think he was trying to prove something. I think so, too. But that's so sad that he went to those links and it ended up taking his life. To impress his dad, who, like... But I feel like that's kind of the, throughout the Kennedy to this day they're all just trying to impress their dads yeah and I think the, the true Kennedy curse may be just like Joe, Joe oh he's, he is a piece of shit yeah he's awful we will see just how so awful he is plane crash number one plane crash number one here comes very quickly after plane crash number two so Joe Jr. was in 1944 May 13th 1948 another plane crash also in France claimed the life of another Kennedy this time, JFK's sister, Kathleen, or Kick, as she was known. She and three others, including her soon-to-be husband, mm. were flying in a small plane in a storm when it went down, killing everyone on board. She was 28. They were flying to... They were going on vacation in uh, Paris, I believe, before meeting her father, Joe, mm-hmm. so her soon-to-be husband could ask for her hand in marriage. Yeah. 
So they were on their way to do that so they could get married, and then this happens. That's insane. Well, in between these plane crashes, JFK and Jackie get married. Uh Uh-huh. And part of their curse was that they were trying to have kids. So they had, like, stillborns, or they would have miscarriages. So that was not... I mean, it's very tragic. Sure, sure. It's a little bit more of a common tragedy, unfortunately. And I think I'm happy now that people are talking about it, because I think a lot of people go through that silently. One in three women have a miscarriage. Yeah, people go through it silently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in 1961, and at this point, JFK has already been elected president. We'll talk more about that when we get into the JFK assassination episodes we're going to do. He's been elected president, and his father, Joseph, suffers a debilitating stroke and develops aphasia, which makes him unable to speak. Aphasia is, that's tough. Yeah. Well, he can't talk anymore, so now how is he going to uh, be super sexist and anti-Semitic? And run the family. If yeah, he doesn't have his voice. A heinous person. Well, he was confined to a wheelchair until his death in 1969. Mm-hmm. 1963, as you just mentioned about uh, Jackie and JFK trying to have children. Well, on August 7th, 1963, Jackie gives birth to their third child, Patrick. Patrick was born three weeks early, weighed only five pounds, and suffered from a lung condition. Sadly, he survived less than two days. Even more upsetting was that this was the second child Jackie and JFK had lost. So, yes, they had the miscarriage. In 1957, they had a daughter that was stillborn, and then Jackie suffered a miscarriage in 1955. And then she had this poor kid. It's so sad. It's very sad. And. There's just, there's a whole lot for their, her family was entwined with the Kennedys before the two of them met. And they also had the Onassis family curse, curse. which many think she brought over to the Kennedys oh, when they no, got married. Oh, no, that was going on before she showed up. Let's no, but they, Jackie. oh, I know, but when you have, it's like the it's a Montagues curse. and the Capulets, now you have this mega curse once they combine. <laughs> That's true. I was like, but don't say she cursed the whole family, because oh, it all happened before. No, her. I think yeah, Joe's ridiculous bullshit cursed this entire family. I think so. Just weeks after suffering the loss of her child, Jackie Kennedy and the entire nation suffered a loss that was felt around the world. On November 22, 1963, while President Kennedy was visiting Dallas, Texas, he was shot to death in his convertible while his motorcade traveled through Dealey Plaza. Have you ever been to the Sixth Floor Museum in Dallas? it's great. It's really great. We should go. Oh, we should go. Yeah. I've also been to... um, the grassy knoll same actually last time i was at the grassy knoll tommy and i had like been downtown somewhere eating and we were walking back to our car and we were like what are all these people with these like weed flags and everything doing and it was like a normal march oh no way and they were all gathered at the grassy that knoll. makes sense because the grass and everyone was just like blazed out of their mind with <laughs> and there was a guy with like dreads and a tie-dyed shirt on a megaphone just talking about like legalizing it but it's it which is fine i agree with all this but it's happening like at the grassy knoll which is a little disrespectful but i will say if you ever go to the grassy knoll there's like a guy there that gives you a newspaper that's all the conspiracy so if you're high as fuck oh yeah like what there's a A lot of people (laughs) whoa (laughs) oh i want shrimp let's go over to hooters i want some shrimp um there's a lot of people down there all the time handing out information that are it's conspiracy yes uh all sorts of stuff. There's also a giant X right in on the street, right in front of it. What is that street? Uh, that's Commerce. Commerce, right there, where it happened. And then, like every few months, the city will like paint over it, and then the next Somebody. day, someone spray paints the X right back. Man. So, but yeah, if you're down there and someone hands you a newspaper, be conscious because they want money for it. It's not free. That's true. That's it's true. not information that is free. No, no, no. They're also going to want to have a real fun conversation with you. I like the guy that's up there with a table, and he has like one of those three. Uh, like what do you call it? Where it's like, like a, when you did a science correct. experiment yes. when you hear a science fair. It's yeah, it's a poster board that stands on its like own. The trifold, the trifold yeah. poster board. Oh yeah. Yes, there's a lot of fun stuff. There's also probably going to be like uh, pro-choice shit and Jehovah's Witnesses. There's a Anybody lot of goes on in the just, It's just pamphlet city. <laughs> That's what they should call. Be it. careful. Yeah. Um. So just seven months after his brother's assassination. Ted Kennedy narrowly escaped death after his plane crashed in Massachusetts while traveling there for the state's Democratic Convention. This was on June 19th, 1964. A fellow senator on the flight pulled Ted from the wreckage, saving his life. 
Ted suffered a broken back and ribs and had to stay in the hospital for five months. His injuries would plague him until his death in 2009. God. As if one political assassination wasn't bad enough, on June 5th, 1968, Robert Kennedy, JFK's younger brother, was assassinated in Los Angeles after winning the California Democratic primary. The shooter was Sirhan Sirhan, mm-hmm. a 24-year-old Palestinian Jordanian immigrant. And Patsy for the CIA. I'm just kidding. Maybe. <laughs> not kidding. I'm not kidding. I honestly I really don't was. know a lot about... I know that they like found a lot of writings, apparently, when they searched his apartment that was very anti Kennedy's and anti his party and stuff, but that's anybody, what the government anybody wants you can to plant find. some writing. And the Illuminati is in charge. I think uh I will substitute the Illuminati with the government. Yeah, I think this, this really was a uh CIA kind of inside job because RFK was um the attorney general while JFK was president and uh, they did a lot to take down the mob and mm-hmm. the CIA was using the mob for like muscle into doing, especially like pushing drugs to make money to pay for alien technology that they're developing. <laughs> also, <laughs> like when, when it happened, so he had been at this, uh, hotel in mm-hmm. LA giving kind of his, uh, acceptance speech or whatever. And they had to go somewhere else right after for the like kitchen. a photo shoot but he kind of got separated from where he was supposed to go. And this oh, other did person was like, because the crowd kept coming in. This other person was like, oh, let's go this way. Uh-uh. And so they went through the kitchen and he was stopping and shaking people's hands. And he stopped to shake a busboy's hand that was a 17 year old busboy that was working at the restaurant. Stopped to shake his hand when Sirhan Sirhan came out from behind like a tr- set of trays with his gun and just shot him. How did Sirhan Sirhan exactly. know to wait there? That's except for the saying. CIA told him to go. That's By the I'm way, saying. This is a listener cautionary statement. When you're on YouTube looking at Kennedy videos, there's like video footage of oh, a yeah. lot of this. Yeah. And especially of, of RFK, I was, and there's photos. I was oh, yeah. not prepared to see that. Yeah. The, uh, there was, I don't remember if it was the New York Times or the Washington Post, but there was some like major newspaper reporting there and they caught the whole thing on audio. Yeah. The shooting and everything. That's what I listened to. And then on there's accident. tons of pictures of, Right after it happened, yeah. like him laying there and mm-hmm. and everything, and his what his pregnant wife, she, Ethel, was three months pregnant at the time, was there trying to get back to see what was going on, and they finally let her through, and she basically saw him right as he like was dying. Out. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, it's crazy. It's 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 terrible. Well, that's the second assassination this family has to suffer. So here is where Chappaquiddick happens, and we're going to talk more about this on our next episode, but here is a general overview. On the evening of July 18th, 1969, Senator Ted Kennedy was allegedly driving Mary Jo Kopechny, a former aide for RFK's presidential campaign, back to her hotel after attending a party together when he accidentally drove his car off the one-lane bridge and into the Pucha Pond. I think that it was an accident. I do think it was an accident. Because he was on drugs. Because he was coked up out of his he mind. He was on massive amounts of drugs yes. and alcohol. Kennedy managed to escape and swim to safety, but left Mary Jo trapped inside. It's what possible the that the senator could have saved her life had he immediately gone for help. However, the accident was not reported until 10 hours later. And by that time, Mary Jo had obviously drowned in the fully submerged car. Like, what the hell? Well, he had to get his story straight and contact his fucking campaign advisor and all his lawyers and shit before he went to do anything. What a, what a horrible fucking amount eight, of oh. final moments for this woman. Oh, my God. First of all. Hopefully it was fast. You're worried that you're about to have to have sex with Ted Kennedy. Yes, yes. That's so you're horrifying. already in a terrible state of mind. But, like, he... And, it's, oh, and he said he was taking her back to her hotel. Well, funny that her purse and her hotel key were at the party they had just left. Yeah, there's that some he holes. was throwing. He was he threw this party at his. I don't know if it was his house or just a house. It that was they like owned, yeah, in the Hamptons because right. Kennedy is owned or in Martha's Vineyard, a, a million fucking houses. Sorry, I can't keep all the fancy vacation places uh, straight. Right? Maybe someday all the rich, fa- white, fancy vacation places. That's true. Well, he was throwing this party for Mary Jo and five others of the aides that had been in RFK's presidential campaign. They were known as the Boiler 
room girls. Okay. They were all like 23 years old. And then it was Ted Kennedy and a bunch of other old white dudes that had wives, but were just going to be the grossest men on the face of the planet during this party. And you will, we'll give you our full Chappaquiddick takes on the Chappaquiddick yeah. episode, but it's, Again, this is a good question. Was it a curse because, you know, the car very veered off the road? Or was it like your Ted Kennedy has a drug problem oh, I think and that's a womanizing definitely problem what it and was. he crashed his car? Yeah, it's just poor choices led to more poor yes. choice, choices. Well, he pled guilty to leaving the scene of an accident causing personal injury and received a two-month suspended jail sentence. Classic. Classic nice rich people punish. Slap punishment. on the hand. In 1973... Ted Kennedy's 12-year-old son, Edward Jr., lost a leg to bone cancer. And that's sad because he's a kid and he doesn't, he didn't ask for any of that. He didn't do anything wrong. No. April 25th, 1984. Another very tragic case. David Kennedy, son of Robert F. Kennedy, overdosed from a combination of cocaine, Demerol, and Melaril, which is a drug used to treat psychotic disorders, in a Florida hotel room. As a child, David had seen his father's assassination all over the TV, which seemingly led to a life of hardships and addiction, which eventually took his life. I, I mean, mean, if that's if anything's going to do it, it's going to be that. Well, I was going to say, if you, every time you shut your eyes, you hear the audio. Yeah. I mean, the audio. Or see those pictures. The audio of the assassination is horrifying. I haven't listened. Don't. Really? It was an accident. I was watching. I was going through my Illuminati JFK I, I stumbled playlist. on some very disturbing things on accident, too. On YouTube. It's, it's and, so it, and it just played. And it was like all about Bobby Kennedy assassination. I was like, all right, I'll look at this. We'll see. And uh, it started playing. And it was like a speech. And then some photos of him doing a speech. And then all of a sudden, it was photos of him in the kitchen. And then it's the audio of him in the kitchen being shot. And everyone's screaming. So you screaming. hear the gunshots? Oh, yeah. And him screaming and oh, stuff? Oh, it's horrible. Oh, that is. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean. Do not recommend. And if also, anything's going to co- drive you to drugs and alcohol, it's it's something like that happening. Yeah. And also just watch your YouTube auto playlist because sometimes things come oh, up. Oh, yeah. Especially now that you have that Dude, in, in my, your history. My Yeah. My search history is destroyed <laughs> forever. If your computer ever gets confiscated. Oh, I'm gonna get a call from. I wanted a nice the FBI. I was gonna say I wanted a nice, concise definition of the Illuminati, and one of the articles was like, "Now you're on a list." They know, and I was like, no. "You were already on a list." I know, probably, <laughs> I probably was. Well, here is. Uh... We already knew Ted Kennedy was a real stand-up guy. In 1991, on March 29th, William Kennedy Smith, his uncle Ted Kennedy, and William's cousin Patrick Kennedy were all at a Palm Beach nightclub when they met two women. The five decided to go to a nearby house owned by the Kennedys. Of course, they've got houses all over the country. And you're just like out at a club with Ted Kennedy? Yeah, yeah. Well, your (laughs) uncle Ted Kennedy, too. And also just look at, if you're, dear listeners, and we'll put pictures of him on the Instagram, but Ted Kennedy looks like a frog made a wish and became a man. (laughs) He looks like a potato with gray hair. Yeah, he looks like a potato with a wig. Yeah. (laughs) Like, if Mr. Potato had had, like, silver fox hair, that's kind of what... <laughs> yeah, he put an Anderson like. Cooper wig yeah, on a potato. Yeah, yeah, Well, they decided to go back to a nearby house owned by the Kennedys, and Smith and one of the women took a walk on the beach. This is where the woman claims that Smith raped her. Smith claimed that the two had consensual sex. Smith was represented by criminal defense attorney Roy Black in a trial that was covered extensively by the media. Although three other women were willing to testify that Smith had also sexually assaulted them in incidents in the 1980s that had not been reported to the police, their testimony was excluded and Smith was acquitted of all charges. There are several reasons why testimony would be excluded. You knew um, I was going to ask that, so I'm glad you are just <laughs> answering it anyway, right off the bat. Um, one of the reasons is like, you ha- there's a balancing test, and if I'm, I don't practice litigation or criminal law, but part of the rules of evidence is, um, you have to balance whether the relevance of the testimony outweighs the prejudicial nature so like if something so i would say unless i was maybe like i don't know a crooked judge that it was or getting paid off by uh, the kennedys very wealthy family exactly i would say that past incidents are relevant 
However, you have the issue that they were never reported, which is not a wrong thing. Sure. Many people have been assaulted. And it's very common. Super common. And the, the issue then would be like, well, these women are definitely going to get ripped up by the defense attorney. Do they want, I mean, they're willing. And this guy was a shark. Yes. He's like a well-known, like, no holds barred, yeah. cutthroat, junkyard dog that'll do whatever it takes. So the question is, does the prejudicial is the prejudicial nature of this of three women with i guess seemingly no proof like i said there's no police reports or dna so tests he, or said, anything. He, he said she said correct thing. the prejudicial nature of those statements is it outweighed does it does the probative value of those statements outweigh the prejudicial nature and obviously this judge thought no sure so, so he and if you're a prosecutor was... if you're a prosecutor and at the in the early stages of the trial so then they say we want to bring these witnesses and the defense objects to those witnesses and you have a hearing on the witness will testify to these things whether it's in a sworn statement or you know or, or they bring the witness in and the judge says nope i'm going to exclude these three witnesses then you as the prosecutor go well aside from this lady saying i got raped on the beach right. and him saying no i didn't we have no other evidence i have to i have to I drop have to the drop charges the yeah so that's what they did. They just dropped the charges at that point. Yeah, I mean, you're if you have as a prosecutor, yeah, if you don't have any, uh, if you don't have strong enough uh, evidence, then yeah, I mean, you can't proceed. Could he have just playing devil's advocate? Can you still go to trial even if that happens and just be like, you know what, we're gonna take our chances? Mm -hmm. And if the and if the prosecutor thinks, you know what, this is a strong, the victim is a strong witness, she's willing to testify. The other women that were there are willing to testify. Like, oh, she came back from the beach and was crying sure. or bleeding or whatever. Then. Yeah, you could proceed, but also, again, are you a prosecutor who maybe gets yeah. paid by the Kennedys? Or if you're exactly. elected and they're like, do you want to keep your job? Mm -hmm. Golly. I mean, this family is, like, well entrenched into the mafia. Oh, yes. And real. just uh, politics and... Yeah, powerful uh, and money, 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 All money, sorts money. of money-making I mean, Joe Kent, I was look, looking up, like, how much his net worth was, and it's basically... He was, like, Zuckerberg rich, yeah. like, in the 30s. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I mean, they... Their wealth and it was like unlimited infamy started long before like most people became aware of because mm -hmm. JFK is really when like everyone was like oh so this family's been through some shit here is one that most people have heard about because a lot of these like I kind of knew about but this one I remember happening because I was a senior in high school oh really December thirty first nineteen ninety seven New Year's Eve Michael Kennedy. In Aspen, Colorado, he was the son of Robert F. Kennedy and Ethel Skakel, was tossing a football with friends while skiing down a mountain when he crashed into a tree and died. He was 39. I remember that because I want to say that, like, didn't, like, SNL and some stuff, like, kind of make fun of no, it? No, did they? I don't know, but I, I was just, I, I have a vague memory of that. I was not going to make fun of it, but I, you I'm know. I'm not going to, I will never no, no, make no. fun of somebody dying, but. But I will say, you know me, I have to ask the logistical question. Don't, I've never been skiing. Don't you have to hold ski poles? I think they were just fucking around. So he was on skis, yes, he was throwing just on a football, skis. but not skiing while throwing a football. Yes, he was just on skis. They were just like, he didn't have a, a helmet on or any kind of protective gear or anything. And I think they were just like fucking around, skiing down a mountain, throwing a football back and forth. And he just crashed and, into a fucking uh, tree. Yeah. Skiing is so dangerous. It really is. It's something that you don't really think of when you're doing it, but it it is kind of a crazy, dangerous sport. I mean, to be fair, Saturday Night Live did a lot of uh, Ted Kennedy. made fun of Ted Kennedy a yes, lot. I'm sure yes. they probably covered something. I, I might be totally off base with that. I just have a vague recollection of that. Well, July 16th, 1999. This is one I also remember. I remember this, too, because my mom thought JFK Jr. was so hot. Oh, he was. He was. a lot. And I also... Do you remember when JFK Jr. was on Seinfeld? Seinfeld. I yeah. was. I mean, I just rewatched all of Seinfeld, so yes, I yeah. did. Yeah, I mean, so I was like, and he oh, ends wow. up with he ends up with Marla the Virgin. Yes, yes, and but because Marla I've, finds out about the contest, he yes. runs downstairs and yep. cries. Yep, he. Uh, so that that episode was probably it was like, late. It was like ninety seven, right around. Yeah, yeah like right before, before this happened. Well, and July, he was like, I mean, he was like rocketing to to like. Yes, he was very good looking. He. Oh, he was the producer of that magazine. Yes. Uh, George, I think, yes. wasn't it? And, yes. he, and he was like next They He was kind of a shoe in to be nominated for senator. Yes. He he was the golden boy. Well, he, his wife, Carolyn Bissett Kennedy and Carolyn's sister, Lauren, 
were killed in a plane crash off the coast of Martha's Vineyard when JFK Jr., the pilot of the plane, became disoriented while trying to descend over water and nosedived into the Atlantic Ocean. All three were killed upon impact. <sighs> That's scary. They said it's very common. They, it's called spatial disorientation. Oh, absolutely. When, sure. when amateur pilots, or even experienced ones, I suppose, are trying to descend over water because it's dark. Also, on this night, the um, the weather was kind of iffy, and visual landmarks weren't you could yeah, really you can't see. really keep oriented and he wasn't licensed to fly his plane by instruments alone yep there's visual... so he should not have been flying no the plane. and there's visual flight rules and instrument flight yes. rules and yeah visual is you can fly when it's a nice sunny day in the yes. daytime and yes. then instrument is anything if it's dark if it's you know if it's hazy foggy rainy which it was those things oh yeah absolutely and so because he, he was in a piper uh, Saratoga. Very small plane. So it's pretty small. It's seat, it's seat six, so it's not like itty bitty, but it is single engine. And uh, let me just say, so I've taken flying lessons before. Oh, nice. In a Beechcraft Bonanza, which is a similar size. Sounds to that. like a fun uh, 50s party Ooh, beach movie. <laughs> you know, Beechcraft Bonanza. Uh, it's a little bit smaller. A Bonanza seats four and a Piper Saratoga seats six. But um, there's uh, this kind of plane has what's called like retractable gear. And that's a whole set of instruments that you have yeah. to learn. And then the, uh, the, just the main, um, cockpit area, I guess not really a cockpit, but like the yoke and the instrument panel, it is especially, I mean, nowadays that shit is digital and it yeah. is very sweet. But in 1999, I you mean, had to know some shit you do. And the problem is too, is you have like an artificial horizon and stuff like that, but it's like your instinct will tell you, and I've flown only in like visual conditions, like but even sunny, yeah, sunny, nice day. day. Yeah. But when you get up there and you're high enough up, like we descended something like 3000 feet in some like 25 seconds. Cause we were at, like, when you're flying an air, a, a general aviation aircraft, so a small airplane, you have to stay at a certain uh, altitude because you, that way you don't crash into other airplanes. Like if you're going north Ooh. to south, you stay at one altitude. And if you're going east to west, you stay at another one. And like, of course, like 737s and stuff yeah. is up higher. And then they have, I mean, yada, yada, yada. I can go into all kinds There's of. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules. There's like, different airspaces and whatnot. But I was just going to say, we were up at like 6,000 and the, the person giving me the lesson was like, oh, we actually need to be about 3,000. So, you know, you press the yoke forward, which is how you descend. And I mean, in like, he goes, oh, okay, okay, okay. It was like 12 seconds. We were 3,000 feet down. I mean, that's how quickly because of gravity yeah and you just push the nose down and it goes whoosh Ooh. so i mean if you imagine that you're not you're trying to land anyway he was yeah. probably pretty close down they, it was just not too far from the airport yep and so you think okay well the airport's right here well it's not it's a little bit further yeah. and you go down and you don't i mean in an instant and you probably don't because it's dark think, and it's water until you're almost on top of that you're not even realizing oh you may not even see the water until it. you yeah. hit it yeah which might be a blessing in disguise seriously because I, I, air plane crashes are one of my biggest fears. Oh, really? I know that they're. What was that stat you said? I say because Christy and I were talking about this before. Of like, is this family cursed or is it just kind of like, oh, you know, maybe they made some bad choices or whatever? But I was like, okay, no, mathematically. Uh, the odds of dying in a plane crash are one for every 1.2 million flights. So yeah, and we've already had three. That's the four, odds of four being, plane crashes. In that's this. the odds of being in a plane crash. The odds of dying is one in 11 million. Wow. So a crash is one in one million, and dying is one in 11 million. The odds of dying in a car or traffic accident are one in five thousand. Yeah. Sure. So it's and one I, of those. And I drive a car almost daily. I fly in a oh. plane. Not nearly that much. Well, I'm about to fly on a plane, so don't talk about oh, it. Oh, no. Me, but, I mean, kidding. they're they're very safe. Well, the thing is, is if you're a general... The, and the other thing is, to carry passengers at, like, uh, you know, on a commercial flight, like a 747, you have to have hours and hours and hours sure. to fly, like, yourself in a general aviation aircraft. It's, it's like... They just increased it, but back then, it was probably a 1,000 or 2,000 hours, which seems like a lot, but it's really not... Well, he should not have been flying. No, and no, no, no. it unfortunately cost him and two others that is their lives. A common tale of general aviation pilots of not heeding the rules. His the rule was because you, you just get your instrument and, only. They were on the their way to uh, his cousin Rory's Rory Kennedy's wedding. God, yeah. So then, can you now you've got your fucking all your families there He's for the wedding, and this is for a fun this happens God, for yeah. a fun family. Funeral slash wedding. God. Well, in 2002, here is something that I was not familiar with. And now 
I've kind of become obsessed with this. We'll have to do a whole episode. And we are going to do... It, it's not going to be this month, even though it is Kennedy-related, but this definitely warrants an, its own episode. In 2002, Michael Skakel, who is the nephew of Ethel Skakel Kennedy, and Ethel was the widow of Senator Robert F. Kennedy. She's the one that they... was three months pregnant when he was assassinated. Mm-hmm. Michael was convicted of a murder that took place on October 30th, 1975. So that was in, he was convicted in 2002 of a thing that happened in 1975. 1975. Wow. Skakel was convicted of bludgeoning Martha Moxley, his neighbor at the time, to death with a golf club. God. They were both 15 years old at the time of her death. In 2013, Skakel was granted a new trial and released on $1.2 million bail. In 2016, the Connecticut Supreme Court reinstated his conviction. However, on May 4th, 2018, the same court vacated the conviction and ordered a new trial. At present, no determination has been made by the state's attorney's office as to whether or not they will call for a new trial. So... This murder happens in 1975. Uh, Martha was going to what they called, um, it was obviously right before Halloween. And they were going in this, doing this neighborhood thing where they, the teens kind of played pranks on the the houses. They would toilet paper them or you know, ring the doorbell and run and stuff. They all were in a very affluent uh, Connecticut neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Well, she's last seen with Michael Skakel and his brother. And then the next morning, she's found bludgeoned to death under a tree in her backyard. They could never really convict the yeah, either one of the brothers. There was also suspicion that uh, a live-in tutor for the Skakel boys could have done it. But no one was ever really convicted. And the case just sat cold until 2002. And one of the... Uh, Dominic Dunn wrote a book that's during this time that kind of they kind of say reopened the case and kind of shined a light on some new stuff. And then the prosecution decided, okay, I think we do have enough evidence to charge Michael. But then the, his defense came back later and said, no, for various reasons, he didn't get a fair trial, yada, yada, yada. They appealed, appealed. And now, like we were talking about before this, do you even call for a new trial at this point? If I mean, there's say? huge, there's, there's hazy memories. It was so long ago. If there are witnesses, some of them may have been passed away sure. or straight up don't remember or aren't interested in reopening it. Um, this <laughs> It's interesting. Once again, he's also a Kennedy. Well, I was going to say, interestingly, the Supreme Court of Connecticut uh, affirmed the conviction and then the defense attorney reappealed again, had them reopen it. And in between, the justice who wrote the majority opinion of the first uh, affirmation of the the um, conviction had le- had retired, oh. so he retired, and then they're like, "Okay, let's go back." Yeah, and then that's whenever he gets his conviction vacated. Wow. Interesting. And one of the dissenting opinions was like, "Undoubtedly, they're thrilled to receive their special treatment that they always oh, receive." Yeah, for sure, because they really do. I mean, it's <sighs> also Michael at the time said that he couldn't have done it because he was masturbating while. Looking into one of his neighbor's window, he was sitting up in a tree jerking off. Well, and that's one of the, I mean, it's not funny. It's disgusting and perverse. However, I will say that was one of the witnesses that he claimed that they should have uh, interviewed. He's like, the neighbor would have told you where I was. I was was looking at her, jerking it off. I was beating off in her tree. Yeah. (laughs) Meet me at the old old tree. That's just the the arrogant nature that this 15 year old kid mm-hmm. had where he's like, I'm just going to fucking, I was jerking it. I he didn't skated kill for that, those many years. And also his other claim was that his brother did it. Yes. Yes. So. And all the neighbors said that the Skakel, all the children were given enormous amounts of money and basically just left to run amok and do whatever you want. And yeah. Their, their father was an alcoholic and abusive and they, neither one of the parents paid them much attention. So again, not that that's any reason to act this way, but like if your parents are pieces of shit, there's your grandparents are you're going to be shit. a piece of shit too. It is a perpetuation of a shitty lifestyle. That's why I do my best to raise a daughter that is not a piece of shit. She, you know what? It's your standard. <laughs> yeah, that's just, just don't be a piece yeah, of shit. Don't be a piece of shit. Well, this is kind of sad. 
Uh, in 2008, Ted Kennedy suffers a seizure and is hospitalized, where it's discovered he had a malignant brain tumor. And then on August 25th, 2009, he lost his life to cancer. I remember that going down, too. It was a big Because he was still a senator at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also very sad, May 16th, 2012, Mary Kennedy, the estranged wife of Robert Kennedy Jr., is found after hanging herself at her home in New York. And it came out after that she was very depressed and alcoholic. I th- I think that's very common in this family, especially amongst the women, the mm-hmm. wives, because look at the men they had to fucking put up with. Yeah. I mean, they're Seriously. parading their mistresses all around. They It said that Joe, the patriarch, was so just above everything that he would bring his mistress home to dinner they said, with his wife. They said he would audibly have sex with women in the house while the family was having dinner. That's insane. He's a psycho. Yeah. I mean, JFK, even though he was hailed as this wonderful president because kind of how he went out, he was a sexist piece of shit. Womanizer. <laughs> yes. Vaguely. Getting intern teenage interns drunk and having sex with them on Jackie's bed and yeah. taking them on uh, when they would travel and stuff. He'd stow her in, in with the luggage. Like, yeah. crazy gross stuff. Yeah. But they were raised. Yeah, when you're raised here and your dad, give it to some woman while you're trying to enjoy dinner with your mom. You just do whatever you want. Yeah, you're well, just Joe kind Kennedy- of- he was like, well, I'm not, I, I'm not going to drink because I'm not some drunken Irish bastard, sure. but he liked a fuck. Uh, yeah, but I'll do everything else. Yeah. And I'll also make a ton of money off of other people drinking. Exactly. Oh, man. Nightmare. So, what- so all this crap. Clearly, they have a lot of stuff that goes on in this family. Why would they be cursed? Why would one say that they're cursed? Well, one rumored legend is that in 1842... JFK's great-grandfather, Thomas Fitzgerald, discovered a chest full of gold coins in an Irish village. He then fled to Boston to start his own business and became filthy rich. However, the treasure was cursed, and the village in which he found it was soon destroyed. So basically, he came over to Boston with a bunch of cursed money, Mm -hmm. and then possibly that led to his entire family being cursed. Dirty money. Yes. Yes. Other origin stories of the curse point to Patriarch Joseph and his anti-Semitism. He's a piece of shit. He's a total piece of shit. So there's several stories that kind of fall into this category. One is, while on a passenger ship together, he told a rabbi and his this rabbi's students to stop praying. Angry, the rabbi cursed him and claimed his descendants would suffer great misfortune. Another one. A Jewish father supposedly cursed him after he refused to help his sons escape from a concentration camp. And then an entire Jewish village supposedly cursed him after they discovered he was dealing weapons to the Nazis. Now, while none of these may be true, he was a known anti-Semite. They did say, he yeah. He didn't even try to hide it. He, that he, if it was a one-off Jewish person, that he would be respectful yes. to their face. But overall, he talked about the Jew-run media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it was like... If he, you know, his lawyer or someone he did business with was Jewish, it was one of those like, well, you're one of the good ones. Yes. But but on the whole, they're all a bunch of dirty Jews. Yes. And he's like, they're they're trying to take over. They're yeah. trying to take yeah. over. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, he was he was disgusting. He so, was mo- and he was mostly um, apathetic as far as the war effort. He thought he was an isolationist. He thought the U.S. should stay out of the war, out of World War Two. He didn't think they should get into it. Then he figured out how he could make money, and then sure. he was like, yeah, all right. He also, fine. I don't remember the exact quote, but I did read something where he basically was quoted as saying, well, the Jews asked for it. Yeah. Well, you know, it happens. Yeah. And he's like, you know, sometimes you just need to, like, you know, clean stuff up. Oh. And you're like, oh, cool, Joe Kennedy, you should be cursed. Yeah, you're yeah. shit. Even if these aren't true, I wish they were. Yeah. I wish you were cursed three times by various Jewish people. Because you deserve it. Yes, absolutely. Well, there's also Heather's favorite. Okay, let me get into this. Heather's favorite theory, the Illuminati. Okay, so Joe Kennedy. <laughs> when he, if, if anybody needs a bathroom break. Hey, this... no, this is where it gets <laughs> juicy. No, this is where it gets very good. Okay, so Joe Kennedy made his money from uh, his dad. His, so P, PJ. PJ Kennedy owned a saloon and a liquor distributor. So then Joe Kennedy became a liquor distributor, used a little bit of inside information and his connections, and he was dealing 
uh, in alcohol during Prohibition, using the mafia, and then also afterwards. So he made a boatload of money, and then he uh, wanted to get out. So he started investing in the stock market, and he was close with a lot of bankers. And he was one of the first people who ever did insider trading. And he did a lot what of a trendsetter, dude. Trendsetter. He did a lot of insider trading and a lot of pump and dump schemes, which is where a group of people get also together. Something you do when you're pregnant and breastfeeding, and you drink a lot of alcohol. Oh, well, that's also something dudes will do to you if they have no morals. What is? That? They'll pump on you and dump you. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> Oh God! Or, I hit my mic. <laughs> or if you have a lot of sex and then you got to poop afterwards. Oh, gross! <laughs> you jiggled it all up in there. <laughs> no, so he did pump and dump schemes where a group of people will buy up a stock to artificially inflate the price and then co like coordinate when to sell. So then when strangers are like, "Oh, the stock's going up, we'll buy it," they don't know that everybody's going to dump on this certain day. And so he did those things, and then the stock market crashed. Well, at the time of the stock market crash, thirty five percent of the investors in the stock market was these Geneva and United Kingdom banks that are owned by the Rothschild and other famous Illuminati families. So Joe Kennedy basically caused the stock and his friends caused the stock market crash and fucked the Illuminati out of all this money. So then they get real mad at him and either they're like going around killing the Kennedys or they use their satanic powers to mm. curse his family. Probably the latter. Definitely. I mean, it's the, it's the most reasonable explanation. Yes. Yes. So I would assume that he, the Kennedys and the Rothschilds would be friends. No, because he, he was like trying to do it on his own. Like he didn't oh, want to be a part were, of it. He yeah, didn't want to listen to the that. Competition. I will say just as a funny aside, FDR after the, uh, the stock market crash was like, hmm, we're going to create something called the Securities Exchange Commission that regulates the stock market. Who Whoever should I put in charge? Yes. Hey, Joe Kennedy, you want to be in charge? And someone goes, don't you know Joe Kennedy's a crook? And he goes, takes one to no one. And he gave him, and the Joe Kennedy's like, well, let me tell you guys what kind of stuff I was doing. And that's insider trading laws and the pump and dump teams, all that shit. Those regulations came out of Joe Kennedy's personal experience wow. on how he was manipulating the market. That's crazy. Anyway, so the Illuminati curse basically started when he lost them all their money and screwed them over. Hey, makes sense. You know. We should do a whole Illuminati episode. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're also going to talk about the alien connection, but that's more in the JFK yes, side. So. Yes, yes, Well, skeptics of the curse, which would be myself and <laughs> probably others, point to the unusually large size of the family and how many of them had high-risk professions. It should also be noted that there are tons of Kennedys that haven't had misfortune. In the Kennedy curse shattered by Les Williams which is a book that came out a few years ago. William says, Joe Kennedy raised his children to believe that they were better than anyone else and that they had to win every time and at any cost. His obsessive driving ambition would influence the decisions his children made and the way they lived their lives. And this controlling overbearing approach would have disastrous consequences for the family over the years. I think that pretty much sums it up. You think so? Yeah. I but mean, was- well, I mean, I think I really do think that there's something to be said for how big this family is, because just, you know, I mean, if you've got a giant family, the chances of something, the probability of bad things happening is going to increase because there's more people for bad things to happen. Just to. statistically yeah, speaking. Yeah. I will, I will also uh, put forth my godmother, Lillian Dickerson's. Uh, explanation is she she would say Joe Kennedy sold his soul to the devil so his family would be wealthy. I mean, he kind of essentially did. Yeah. It was just to the bankers and investors. The and, devil of greed. Yeah, exactly. The true yeah. devil of greed and, and and ruthless ambition. Oh, what a nice metaphor we've made. See, Lillian, you were right all along. Oh, you were. He did sell his soul to the he devil. He did. I mean, in a way, yes. In a 2009 interview, Patrick Kennedy said that there was no curse and Edward Kennedy Jr., Ted's son, said the Kennedy family has had to endure these things in a very open way. But our family is just like every other family in America in many ways. Sure, my grandpa was an ambassador to the UK <laughs> sure. and the head of the SEC, and my uncle was the president, yeah. and my other uncle. And we all was... had houses in <laughs> and the, the Hamptons and Martha's <laughs> Vineyard and Palm Beach and a million and other places. And who hasn't just flown their own plane? I mean, three or four times to be fair i've flown a yeah plane. you have you also have a motorcycle so I you're do. basically a kennedy i'm pretty much a kennedy you guys <laughs> and definitely cursed just based on my life oh just i kidding. think you're cursed with kindness hey we're gonna talk about this in the psychic oh, episode yeah, i yeah, am yeah. very blessed oh you are blessed i mean anyone could tell you that oh girl well what do you think 
I think Lillian was right. He sold his soul to the devil. Yeah. Whether it was like in a ritualistic ceremony, I don't I don't know about that, where he's like, praise the Lord. But I, I wonder, so I was talking to the psychic, and she was like, you know, visualization it makes things happen. Sure. And she's like, you want to put positive things out there. And so if Joe Kennedy's like, thinking like, I don't care what it takes. I want this to happen. It's one of those like He's movies. Ruthless. It's those movies like, be careful what you wish for. Of Like, mm-hmm. you can have a wish. Well, I wish to have a million dollars. Well, you get it because your whole family dies and you get sure. an insurance settlement. You know, it's yeah. like one of those where he he was so solely focused on this that he like really did cause it. Yeah. And it really is kind of like a negative energy curse, even if it's not literally like a satanic ritual. Sure. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I think that he was so ruthless and wanting his family to be successful and respected and in high society that he would basically sell his soul to the devil, sell his children's soul to the devil. He would just so, sacrifice them for any, yeah, for he any did it. Cost. I mean, he fucking had his kid's brain removed because she was born with some mental deficiencies, which by the way, were not her fault. No. And they said um, that her, aside from just having, you know, her normal, uh, because the oxygen cut off and having a brain injury that she basically just had like ADD and bipolar yeah. and it was just like mental health things that could have been treated, but he wasn't interested in what was best for the child. He was interested in what was best for his ambition yeah. and the image of the family. So he basically just sacrificed her away in yeah. an institution. So he didn't have to out of sight, out of mind. I don't know about religion, how religious anyone is, but Joe Kennedy is in hell. <laughs> Even if he's the only one, he gets the golden juice award of being a real piece of shit. Yeah, I, I, I second that nomination. All right. So that's the first of our, our four-part Kennedy series. Yes, I'm excited. I know because there's so much to unpack in all these. And, and the I was more really I trying read, to hold the hold more. Back. I'm like, my God, this family, like, cursed or not cursed, they've led an incredibly crazy just, just juicy. life. Yeah, yeah very juicy. juicy. Yeah. Yeah. Who are the Kardashians when you've got the Kennedys? That, we need a reality show back then. Oh. Actually, probably a lot of the stuff wouldn't happen if people had been paying attention or been able to pay attention. <laughs> right. Well. Shout outs. Oh, you guys heard on the, if you weren't at our live show, then this is the first time in this episode you've heard our new theme song. Yeah. Shout out to Matt J at Matt J Music DFW. And we'll tag him on Instagram for coming over and using the podcast studio and, and recording the theme with me. Oh, and helping me. With all, and singing. yes, and our lovely Heather is the one doing the vocals on that. Also, speaking of our podcast studio, I'd just like to personally thank your mom, Nancy, for our lovely sign. We'll post a picture on that Instagram. she has made for our door. She asked me today, "What does Christy think about the sign?" I oh, think she, saw she, it, did. she saw it at the birthday party, and she I showed it. it to many people at the birthday party too. <laughs> They're like, "Come look! It's like look at our at the sign." It's Nancy partially made. to show where we record the podcast, and partially to help people find the bathroom. Oh, that's did she make that other one that says "Not the bathroom"? Uh-huh. <laughs> We'll post the pictures on Instagram. My mom has put signs up in my house. Well, because the first party you had over here, you just wrote a sign that said yeah, not the bathroom. I just wrote on so the now Sharpie. she's made you a permanent it's classy. Permanent sign. I love it. Yes. yes, thank you, Matt J. Also, thank you to everyone that came out to the Dallas Psychic Fair yesterday. It was so much fun. Uh, such a great crew. Yes, Maggie, Sarah, Lacey, Kate, Laura, Jessica, Laurie, Steve, Wendy, and Amy. Am I missing anybody? Me and you, baby. Me and you. It was a great time. We are going to do a mini soda about that. And it's the first Sunday of every month. So next, if you didn't get to go this time, I think it's December 3rd or... The first is Sunday in December. First Sunday in December. We're going to go again. All right. Well, the best thing you can do for us is to like, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast and tell a friend who you think you would that would like us to check us out. It means so much to us and it really helps us get more exposure. You can follow us on Instagram at Twitter at Sinisterhood Pod and like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. Uh, Christy, where can they find you on social media? Uh, social media, Twitter, I am Christy or GTFO. And on Instagram, I am at Christy M. Wallace. On Instagram, I'm Heather versus the world, Heather vs. the world. And on Twitter, I'm MCK versus the world, MCK vs. the world. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Sinister. Hood.